Uh, meantime, I want to focus a little bit more on what we're seeing play out on the political front here as President Trump moves forward with naming a new nominee for the Supreme Court. Uh, here we have seen Republicans, uh, too notably, come out against that plan, saying that they would block the nomination. That would be Murkowski and Collins. But we also saw the surprise move, Senator Mitt Romney today, saying that he would support moving forward with that uh, nomination process, surprising a lot of people considering uh, how his relationship with President Trump has played out over the last uh, few years here. Uh, and now investors are saying that that could actually be problematic, potentially, when you think about how far apart Republicans and Democrats already were. It could damage hopes that we would see another uh, round of stimulus come through here as more and more Americans remain uh, without jobs in this pandemic. And joining us now for more on how that could shift uh, the economic outlook here is our next guest, uh, Jim O'Sullivan, is TD Securities Chief U.S. Macroeconomic Strategist. And notably, I just want to point this out as well, he's been Market Watch uh, Forecaster of the Year in 12 of the last 16 years uh, since that award came about. But Jim, it's good to be chatting with you. I mean, when we look at that, obviously this election is going to add to volatility. Uh, but when you survey your investors here, what are you seeing, I guess, in terms of expectations and how the new Supreme Court drama changes that outlook? Hi, Zach. Hello, hello everybody. Well, I mean, I, I guess our main focus, just in terms of following the economy and, and, and how that influences markets, um, is uh, what happens with fiscal stimulus right now. And even before last Friday, even before of before the news of uh, of, of Justice Ginsburg's passing, um, there was stalemate in fiscal no negotiations. Of course, there's been talk about a phase four deal, adding to the rounds that they've already done, particularly the big CARES Act in April. But um, that's been pretty much in stalemate. I mean, part of that is because the numbers have been relatively good. I mean, they, we've had, as the president puts it, a record recovery in the last couple of months. Now, unfortunately, that comes after an even more record plunge. So the net of it is still uh, payrolls are down 11 and a half million. But nonetheless, the numbers have been relatively strong. And we would say, ultimately, you will need more fiscal stimulus. And already, I think there are signs that that upward momentum is, is slowing. But um, at this point, yes, it looks like stalemate. And if anything... The, the intensity of the battle over the Supreme Court and just that focus uh, probably only lessens further the chance that we get a fiscal package before the election. Yeah, and as we've heard, uh, even from Fed Chair Powell, a lot of this is tied back. You can see this recovery uh, playing out over the last couple of months, maybe losing some steam, but a lot of it tied back to what happens on the health front and, and whether or not we can get a control on this pandemic. And hopefully we don't see uh, another second wave here that a lot of medical experts are fearing. But when it comes to those expectations, uh, obviously, that's going to be a key piece of whether or not a, a President Trump gets reelected, but also b what happens in the Senate, uh, because it seems like more investors are pricing in the idea that we would see split government here. But increasingly, we've seen odds of a blue wave and Democrats retaking control in the Senate rising. Uh, so, what might that do to kind of catch maybe some investors flat-footed here if they aren't prepared for something like that? Well, it, it's a good question, and we've been asking people what they think is in the markets in terms of our clients, et cetera. And, uh, and even in turn, what it means if it goes one way or the other. And I mean, there are a lot of different views on that. And um, certainly the betting markets at this point would say there's probably more or less a 60% chance that it's, that it's Biden rather than Trump, but it's not, it's not like 90, 10. I mean, so the markets, it's not that far from, from, from being even, but clearly Biden has an edge right now in terms of betting markets. And of course, in, in polls even more so. And, um, and likewise, the Senate, I think it's not quite 60 percent, but it's probably high 50 something percent uh, probability that Democrats are the majority party in the Senate. But mm -hmm. in terms of a combined probability, that probably still means less than 50 percent chance. There's a lot of possibilities in terms of whether it's a complete blue wave. So I would say, yeah, blue wave is not priced in. And of course, yep. if you get a blue wave as in a majority uh, Democrat Senate on top of what almost certainly will once again be a Democrat majority House and a, yep. and a Democrat White House, is that good or bad for markets? And of course, you get different views on that. I mean, from a business perspective, there's no question that the Trump administration has been helpful in terms of taxes. But of course, a lot of other considerations go into um, what's good for the market. Yeah, well, real quick, that's what that's what stood out to me in your guys' survey, because uh, most it seemed like 33 percent said they would be short equities to position themselves for a blue wave. But outside of that, there does seem to be one sector that could be potentially used as a hedge. We had one guest yesterday highlighting uh, cannabis and what could happen there if Democrats were to come into power. Uh, of course, Democrats control the House uh, and they seem to be planning a vote on the Moore Act, which would legalize cannabis at a federal level as well as expunge 
uh, the criminal past of a lot of people who were arrested under cannabis uh, malfeasance, if you want to call it that. But I mean, it does seem like maybe one of those sectors that would catch a boost if Democrats were to gain power. Would you agree with that? I must admit, I have no expertise in cannabis. <laughs> so I, I really, it's not the sort of thing I, as, as it's, it's this very small part of the economy, of course, as well. So it's not probably going to drive um, what happens to GDP and employment and inflation in the Fed. So I must say, I don't, I don't have a position on that. Well, look here, uh, the, the title it's macro strategist, I don't blame you for not, not being a cannabis strategist. Uh, very interesting, regardless. And nonetheless, when you think about preparing for what could happen here, Obviously, it's been a very volatile year, no doubt expected to continue as we move closer to that election. But Jim O'Sullivan, TD Securities Chief, U.S. Macroeconomic Strategist, appreciate you taking the time to chat.